Music is for everyone to enjoy. It's an inclusive and universal form of entertainment. But why is it still uncommon to see women behind the decks? I'm Juba, a DJ born in London, raised in Essex and living in Berlin since January 2018. I've been DJing for about three years now. And in this time, there's been a lot of talk around gender in the world of DJing and electronic music. I'm also part of a London-based DJ collective called Boko Boko, which was partly established to encourage more women to get behind the decks, especially as it has been notoriously hard for up-and-coming female DJs to get bookings at parties that have very often been run by men. I've become pretty well-versed in the discussions around women and DJing in the UK and Germany. So I was interested in exploring the topic in other parts of the world too. Nigeria seemed for me an obvious place to start. Being Nigerian and growing up around a culture meant that I already had an idea of how impactful the role of gender is in its society as a whole. So I was intrigued to hear the stories of women over there to see how this affected their experiences as DJs. Thank you, crazy for this one. <laughs> My name is DJ Yin. I sing as well as DJ. Hi, I'm DJ Aizon. Born and raised in London. Now I live in Lagos for about four months. Hi guys, this is Sensei Lu. I'm a DJ producer and also a nurse. From 2014 to 2016, I was combining DJing with nursing. And then it got so hectic because they are both two very demanding professions. So I just decided, okay, you know what, let's just suspend one and focus on the other. So. Hello guys, this is Sensei Lo. You're welcome to 93.3 Hot FM. Lagos is hot. Let's get this party started. So my music is mainly a fusion of Afro, Afro sounds and house music. Uh, mainly because we are in West Africa, obviously, and it's important to connect with the crowd. As a DJ, I like to experiment with different sounds because I feel it's the job of DJ to introduce sounds to the crowd. It's more about introducing people to new music or introducing people to music they know, but in a new way. That's basically the concept. four years of leadership in the country have affected me in different ways. First, the economy really took a downturn and it affected everyone across, you know, profession. Like it, it, it did affect companies closed down. My former company closed down for good. They've you know, laid off lots of staff. But as a DJ, it's different because you are more independent. We've seen really bad conditions like happening. People still come out to turn up. It's about partying, it's about, you know, just making people happy. So at the end of the day, when people are sad and frustrated from the government, they really do want to enjoy themselves. So that's where we come in. Baby, settle down, let's have a conversation. Ever since you left, man, my heart be vacant. You know how I hate it when you keep me waiting. Now I'm losing patience, got me hella faded. I started DJing in 2014 and I remember I didn't I didn't really know how to use controllers then so it was a lot of virtual DJ and then I finally learned to use the controllers I was so excited so I DJed for like five hours straight I've always been around music my dad was a DJ and basketballer and then I was opportune to be around Jimmy Jat so he trained me I sing as well as DJ. I sing about love most of the time. I have a song out that's not about love, it's about depression. Because I was depressed at some point in my life and 
I felt people could easily relate to that. Originally from London, born and raised, uh, moved to Nigeria about four months ago. I um, played all sorts of stuff, Afro beats, hip hop, ballet funk, which is like Brazilian funk music. It goes like, um, that's like the base of all of their songs. is like such good music to dance to. Um, I call it like UK dance music, like Mojo Lady and um, Armin Van Helden, You Don't Really Know Me, those kind of songs I love playing. So really just like a bunch of music that stops you from sitting down. Half of the genres I just mentioned don't really go down here. <laughs> so it's kind of difficult to express myself and I've had to change uh, my typical set quite a lot so that it fits here, which I think is important to do because you have to play to your crowd. Obviously Afrobeats, you have to have the latest of the latest songs to be relevant. The, the throwback tunes they'll love, the newest of the new, they want to hear like five times in one night, which I also had to get quite used to. So the reason I came to Nigeria was to specifically to do NYSE. NYSE stands for National Youth Service Corps which is a program that every graduate, every Nigerian graduate has to do in order to get a job, um, especially if you want to work in politics. So it lasts a year and then the rest is just like regular work experience. But every day, one day a week, you do community service. They just give you a bag and say, this is your uniform. So what you have to do is like go to the tailors, which are based um, where NYSC is. Did you do camp? Yeah, I actually stayed. The most prominent thing was the fact that because I was British, I was like, I call it foreign girl privilege. So much like white people privilege, I had a certain privilege because I wasn't just Nigerian. I can understand Pigeon English, but speaking Pigeon English is like a different thing. Um, when I moved back, I really was like Oyimbo, which is the Nigerian word, not that Nigerian is a language, but everyone knows that word to mean foreigner, AKA white person. <laughs> so it's like, I come in and I'm just a foreigner. I was, I was like still the outsider, even though I felt like I was at home. I also don't speak any Nigerian native languages, which made it much harder. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you can stop here. <laughs> okay, you got it. I have this extortionate money. I feel so much. Yeah, this thing. Huh? So what's the idea? Hi, dude. Yes, uh, oh, I'm the money. Add. Add. Oh, come on. Anyway, thank but you. Just add. destroy this whole cake. No, no. I just turned this thing over. Maybe you'll buy another new one for me. Yeah? I, sorry, I don't speak the language I you. DJ Ayizon, DJ Yin and Sensei Lo have very distinct backgrounds, both as women and DJs. But all are susceptible to society's judgments of their chosen paths in music. How do assumptions about female DJs impact their careers and other aspects of their lives? I think the society has this big stigma against female DJs because it's like, you go into a Yoruba home, for instance, and then, oh, mom, this is my girlfriend. She's a DJ. Ha! Huh? She's a DJ. So she stays out at night. She's clubbing all the time. I don't think any mother would want her son to end up with a lady that's out at night all the time. And because of the profession, people have this ideology that you are a certain way so they can move to you as they like. There's a lot of disrespect sometimes. My mom felt DJing wasn't the right path because she believed that I would just come after graduating, I would get a nine to five. And that was the ideology. That's the ideology every African parent has. But DJing is like 
that's at the bottom of the chain. <laughs> it's like they're not gonna treat you with any respect whatsoever. So it was it was very uh, it was hard convincing her. DJing and being a girl and then staying out late at night is so risky. So you always have to have like somebody you can fall back on or you need to have some sort of company when you're coming back. Most often it's preferable when it's a guy. DJing somehow is seen as a male dominated profession. It's not always seen as you know a female profession like here you have stereotype professions, like you see a nurse, they just think you're a female, and then we have male nurses. And then again, there's this other misconception of partying late at night, you know, it's not as, as a responsible female, you should be at home, not necessarily in the club. Recently I was going for a gig and I was in a cab and having a conversation with the driver and he was like, wow, you, you left nursing and you're a DJ, it's like, why did you do that? That's like backwards. And I said to him, I was like, that is the, your, 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 your process of thought right now is actually what's backwards. Like, you're just looking down on DJing as a profession. You don't even know what it's about. But he just said, no, as a woman, you should be at home. I was like, ah, here we go again. So society expects that, that, you know, at a certain age, you should have gotten married or you should be in your husband's house. And when you're in your husband's house, you cannot be going out. But nah, I think that's just nonsense. <laughs> I didn't start DJing till like five years ago and I'm not I'm in my early 30s and I focused fully on it two years ago and so far I have no pressure none so I feel it's an individual thing if you let society pressure you, then that's fine. That's your choice. But personally, I won't. Female DJs are cool. Most of them are beautiful ladies. No, they can never be better than male DJs. Male DJs are more better. Because DJ, when we say DJ, we know DJ is a, is a musical stuff. And we know male are much more better than female in terms of music. When in terms of mixing, male DJs are better. They are better. I know, I know, I know DJ Nana, I know DJ Koopi. I, to mention Fuchsia, I know those two. And they are good also in their own aspect. But you can't compare them to Spino, all those popular DJ, you know. Intersectionality explains how various factors overlap to shape on specific experiences of discrimination and disadvantage. Despite the general stigmas against female DJs in Nigeria, other elements can also determine the course of their respective careers. I think my, my parents' reservations about DJing was gendered because the first thing they kind of said was, this is, this is a tomboy thing, this is a, why are you doing that? Like, it's not really very ladylike. Cuppy was a, a positive influence where they saw someone with all this money could actually be a DJ and be super duper successful. DJ Cuppy is Femi Otedola's daughter. Femi Otedola is one of the richest guys in this country, known for his businesses and stuff. She didn't influence me to be a DJ, but her being a DJ has opened up people's minds because she is so rich and famous. Because DJ Cuppy's success has changed people's opinions about what a DJ can look like or what a DJ can be like, it, that, that definitely would have positively helped me Maybe she broke the stigma of being, of having to be a female DJ, or be like a super tomboy, or be like your sexuality be questioned. Like there, there were always female DJs in this country before Cuppy that may not have been of her class and of her wealth, but since her, people maybe opened their eyes up more. I think of a certain class, if you're a female DJ. I'd say you can avoid a lot of the stigma of, about being a female DJ. It's just Nigerians being classist, really. It would be ridiculous to say I didn't benefit from classism in Nigeria, simply because whether I like it or not, I'm of a certain status and I can't avoid it. It's not necessarily wealth, but it's who you know. So yeah, like my parents are doing great, but 
If they didn't know certain people, I wouldn't have got certain opportunities. It's a good day. Um, Even getting yeah. my first gig, December of 2017, um, my mum so knew someone who owned a venue. He looked at me and he was like, yeah, sure, you can do that at my club. How's Thursday? I was like, uh, Thursday's great. Thank, thanks for asking. And it was like, he'd never heard me, nothing. He just kind of gave me the opportunity. Right here in, in Nigeria, in all honesty, as a woman in entertainment, you have to work three, four, five times harder than the guys because, I don't know, there's this saying that guys have it easy, you know. When I meet a male DJ and we, maybe we're playing at the same gig or something and I want his details to like actually connect as DJs and like maybe learn something off him or something, it's like once I've asked for his details, I'm trying to move to him or I'm trying to chat him up or or he takes it as a sign that he's allowed to chat me up and it's like no this is strictly business like a lot of the time I've had to just cut off a potential network that could have been just purely helpful because I've seen where their mind is going and it's like I don't need that headache I don't necessarily want your attention just because I'm a female DJ that wears makeup sometimes Oh, female DJs that actually want, I, I actually like them because DJ Nana is my personal friend. So they're actually good. They make everywhere, you know, now when girls are there, everything is always yuri yuri. So I actually like them. Their life of the party, especially when they are, they are DJing and dancing, hailing, shouting. Is, I think they are, they're coming up very well and what time they're going to take over the guys. So I support the female DJs in Nigeria. Despite persistent reservations, in some circles, the tide is turning in favour of female DJs. However, with female talent still very much underrepresented across party and festival lineups in Nigeria, how much of this change is genuine and long term? Being a female DJ is definitely a novelty. It's def like people come up to me and say, I've never seen a female DJ before. Wow, I can't believe you do this. And I'm just like, well, it's just the thing that you do with your hands. Not really specific to any gender, but fine, no problem. I'll accept to say thank you, you know. But also, it's like, it's, if I people see me or people hear that I'm a DJ, they'll be like, oh, DJ Cuffy. And I'm like, yeah, she's one. Compared to before the Lego scene, right now for female DJs, it's way better. So it's like, we are at an advantage and we are treated better now. But then you have to be very good at the craft. If you are not good at it, it's just a pretty face you have. And that's why personally I don't I don't use the hashtags female DJ. I just want to be a DJ. Like I don't want to be a female DJ or I don't know, whatever it is title they have to it. Let me just be a DJ, you know. Why 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 break it down into female and male DJs? It's music we're playing. Music knows no gender really. There's this standard guys have put. Now here's the thing, when, they, when, when you get to a gig and they see a female, they might just say, oh, okay, she's pretty, she's fine. They might not have any expectations, but they know the expectations they have from male DJs. So when you come up and you now surpass such expectations, it makes everybody turn like, wow, you're even a female. I wasn't expecting this. Sometime last year, I was playing at a venue and a man came in. He was hearing the sound, obviously. He didn't know who was playing because the boot wasn't it was a bit far from where the crowd was. So he walked up to the, to the booths, he saw me playing, but went to meet the male DJ who wasn't playing and asked the male DJ like, yeah, who is the DJ? Or oh, are you the DJ? And he needed that mix. But he couldn't come to meet me. Maybe he felt, he just, the way he even looked at me was like, it's even a female, like, he, he just acted like I wasn't there and then moved on to the guy next to me who wasn't even set up, who wasn't playing. Them thinking that it's so like crazy that a woman could be a DJ, I just kind of accept it. Like, yeah, sure. That'll probably get me more bookings in future. The fact that it's like a weird thing. I don't know why anywhere in the world being a female DJ is such a thing, if you think about it. Because in London, being a female DJ is, it, it's still like a novelty, but it's not like a hold the phone. There's a female DJ in the room. It's just like, oh, that's cool. She's female, she's a DJ. But in this country, it's still very rare. I feel like being a female DJ is more than a trend, but at the end of the day, your substance is what will make you stand out. Just because I'm a female doesn't necessarily mean I'm just in it for the aesthetics of what it looks like. What if I'm doing this for the long term? 
Yeah, the female DJs are very, very good because there was like, for example, there was once upon a time in Q Logs, we were all together with my friends. Then there was a way the girl just scratched up the music and the way she gave her bounce step. And I said, man, this is cool. My, my, my friend actually gave her like 200K. Can you beat that? That's tell you. I've never seen a male DJ collecting like 200K in a club. Why? But a female DJ, the way she bounce, her swag and everything, then it's just cool. I said, yeah, nice one. They are good. The gender pay gap is a hot topic in Europe. An EU study showed that compared to men, women work around two months for free each year. The music industry is no exception to this issue. Negotiating fees can be a touchy subject. So in Nigeria, where the gender pay gap is also a problem, how do Lagos' female DJs fare against their male counterparts? I would be surprised if there weren't um, imbalances in terms of pay and gender, but men haven't really told me what they're getting paid. And I've done more free shows than I'd like to have done <laughs> in this space, so. You have a lot of people, okay, come, we'll pay you at the venue, haha, <laughs> okay. And then you go because you love what you're doing. And you get there and there's no pay. And sometimes you get stranded at the location because sometimes you have little or no money. I remember there were times I would cry after gigs because I would DJ for like six hours and not get a dime. Or you find situations like, oh, go and meet that guy, he'll give you the money. You go to that guy, oh, go and meet that guy. So it was, it was, it was really annoying. It's just, it boils down to some basic misconceptions, really. You know, some people feel like because you're female, you cannot fight for your rights. Don't worry, I'll just pay her this amount. It's okay, she be, she's a female, who will fight? You know, like, you know, we've had those kind of experiences in the past, you know, so you just don't want to push too far. But when you push, then they see, oh, okay, this person can actually fight for what she believes in, then they begin to sit up. People around the world are paying more attention to issues surrounding mental health. According to the World Health Organization, Nigeria ranks number 15 in the world for suicide. However, depression remains a taboo subject. In high pressure industries like music, riddled with job insecurity, relentless schedules and the constant need to hustle, mental health can suffer, especially in an unforgiving environment like Lagos. But some DJs are using their craft to counteract this. DJ helps me help people fight depression because I control moods. I'm a therapist in a club or any social gathering that you are at. You can possibly have like a thousand naira in your pocket and I'll play when the bed do the enter body, you know? And you forgot it. Oh, it's just one K in the pocket though. <laughs> so I have a song out, it's about depression. It's called Kilimanjaro. Hey, my name is Fashina. You listen to DJ Ian and Becky on the beats. Hi, my name is Ben McCauley, and I'm going to share my thoughts on depression. Hey, guys, this is Nova, and um, here's my experience with depression. Hey, um, my name is Kimmy Smalls. I am an on-air personality. Depression, um, the first thing I would like to say is that Depression is a serious problem. It's a serious disorder. It is treatable, but it is serious. And I would very much like for people to stop underestimating um, the seriousness of it. I am just a man. A depressed friend or family member. Would you please forgive me? I can't just snap out of you by sheer force of will. Try to fill the void. A serious condition and it affects anyone. Deep, deep down inside me. Anyone. I am putting together a foundation, starting up a foundation called the Listen To Me Foundation because people that are depressed want to be heard. I'm really about helping people come out of that sunken place because there are times that I will be depressed and I really do not know how to tell anybody about it. You know, sometimes you just, I'm okay and then all of a sudden I just feel empty. I just feel worthless. There were times when it felt like DJing wasn't for me. It felt like I was ruining my future by DJing. That made me feel very alone. 
and then there's this feeling of being underrated i felt that a lot really it really bothered me because i'm very passionate about my music there were times i would kill sets like i would kill sets but because i didn't believe in myself i wouldn't think i was good enough and that kind of energy people can read it even if they know that you are good they would want to rub you down because they see that you do not believe in yourself but i'm lucky enough to have gotten people around me that saw the vision i saw because i was depressed because i felt like nobody else saw my vision it was just me I stopped being depressed in October because I learned to love myself and appreciate now, not live in the past, not try to understand what is going to happen in the future, and just appreciate the present because the present is a gift, which is why it's called the present. I'm proud of where I am now, and I appreciate it. You can say I'm bad and you're good. You can say I'm wrong and you're right. But I wanna him consign you. Wait till you talk, no fear on my skin. You listen to my voice and you can just relate to what I am saying. People that are depressed want somebody that understands where they are coming from. Waiting at to only got the judge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I want people yeah, to be able yeah, to relate yeah. to what I am saying because I know you feel oh, it too. Oh, oh, oh. That's how I feel I can help. Um, in all honesty, I feel like presently the, the rise of Afrobeats in Africa, especially worldwide, I feel it's in two ways. It's genuine, but at the same time, there's always going to be room for exploitation. And I feel like people are exploiting the aesthetics of it more than it than actually exploiting, you know, the sounds itself. Because if they were if they were if they were actually exploiting the sounds, I feel they would dig deeper. It, you won't hear the most Afrobeat songs sounding monotonous. And it's cool to, you know, look African right now. It's cool to accept your melanin. It's, I just feel like people are more into what is in vogue. And so as Africans, we need to pay more attention to these times. So this is the best time to pass our message through Afrobeat. When you talk about the strings, you look at the houses, they have so many instruments that are strings. It's not just your regular guitars. There's so many sounds that are unexploited, not negatively, but positively to make people understand that Africa, like there's a lot to Africa and African sounds and just your regular Afrobeat. So the aim is actually to bring out all the sounds, put them into house music, create proper message, proper music that would last for like, you know, every, anywhere you play, people can relate with it. It can send a message of unity, love, you know, basically bring people together. I mean, that's really the concept of music, using your message, to, your, your music to pass a message, you know, that will resonate over time. I want to DJ in Ibiza, I want to DJ in France, I want to DJ all over the world because I want to meet other people and help them connect with my music, the way I DJ, the way I sing. So it's a worldwide thing. You need to be able to listen to that voice in your head that's always speaking to you because in the end that's who God goes to dwell in. And just believe that you got this regardless because nobody got it like you and just appreciate everything you have. Like, even if it's as little as the air you're breathing in, you have to appreciate. I have never for one day regretted because, I mean, it's about living your life and DJing makes me happy, so why not? So I can just do it. After meeting these three women, it struck me how much deeper the conversation around female DJs ran in comparison to what I was used to in my European circles, where discussions have largely been confined to the arenas 
of nightlife, clubs and other music spaces. As much as they also reflect general sexism and patriarchy, in Nigeria, issues facing female DJs permeate further into other areas of life. Beyond questioning their ability, tokenising them or undermining their legitimacy, society seems preoccupied with how being a female DJ conflicts with what is expected of women in general. Pursuing a career based in a man's world, a nighttime world full of hedonism and excess, goes against accepted notions of what they should be doing at a certain age, how freely they should roam, especially at night, and how they should prime themselves for the ensuring duties of being a Nigerian woman and a wife. However, it's also clear that these rules apply with varying levels of stringency depending upon how rich and well-connected you are. If you have money or a prestigious network, you can circumvent many of these gendered pressures. Money and connections provide societal status and you're probably still likely to get married. But there is a general shift in opinions. Conversations around gender are on the rise in Nigeria and sections of society are starting to question the status quo. Female DJs are becoming objects of positive intrigue and marketability, and many women are taking heart from this, pursuing their goals with more conviction and tenacity, and with the hope that this is a truly profound and permanent movement. The title Assurance was influenced by a popular song from one of Nigeria's biggest Afrobeat stars, Davido. Assurance is a typical Nigerian love song in which the guy promises to take care of the girl provide financial security and assures her that all she needs is him, her man. However, assurance in its literal sense also means a determination and confidence in one's abilities. Something that I saw reflected in these women who are taking on Lagos and carving out a space for themselves in Nigeria's music scene. Make you no fear, it's still no care. We just they do I'm J J I a Lulu. Color and show me, yeah, I a Lulu. Grind it for the bad bad, I a Lulu. We are getting there, I a Lulu. We just they do I'm J J I a Lulu. Color and show me, yeah, I a Lulu. Grind it for the bad bad, I a Lulu. Bad bad, bad bad, I a Lulu. Them say them no one make we chop. Them say them no good take us go so make we chop. But still we'll never ever stop. I'm feeling great, I'm feeling like I'm getting on. I've been on a low, had to take a break, but now I'm steady in my zone. People see me on the telly, had to get a better scope. Niggas acting funny, but you see, we know they joke. I be going hard, trying to make ends. Me, I ain't here, trying to make friends. Trophy, show fees, so I pay rent. A house for the folks, good, it makes sense. So if it makes sense, tell it. 